So good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we are approaching 1.15, um, my time, 11.15 UTC. So we would uh, also like to start the presentation. So good day and welcome everybody um, to this marketplace session, adapting a carbon accounting tool, which is a joint session of ICFC and Hub Logistics. With this organization I'm, Jacob Sterry, I'm working for. And I'm also very happy to introduce you to Carmen Garcia Duro from ICSC, and uh, we will present the topic together today. Before we dive into the topic of carbon accounting, let me frame the problem of climate change and what is at stake and why we need sustainable operations. We are at the beginning of a climate crisis, which will impact all of our lives and the situation we are operating and providing aid in. I don't want to get too much into details about climate science, um, but I brought this uh, graph here, which I find really interesting and which summarizes the impacts of climate change. Um, it shows the, the current temperatures in the context of the last 22,000 years. So this is how they developed in the last uh, thousands of years. And we see a steep increase in the last decades. It shows also which major parts of climate system could be lost at different temperature rises and where the Paris Agreement tries to keep the, the temperatures below, so well below two degrees, which might not even be sufficient for the survival of coral, coral reefs worldwide. And uh, it shows also how temperatures could rise under various scenarios. So we have one scenario here, which is very, ambit very ambitious with aggressive carbon uh, emission cutting and carbon neutrality by 20, 000, uh, 20 2100. And um, on the other side, we have a very pessimistic scenario with continuous increase of greenhouse gas emissions. The current trend is somewhere between here, between the other two scenarios. So what does this graph show us? First of all, climate change will have great impacts on our environmental system. And as a consequence, the world must come together to mitigate these impacts and fight the climate crisis. And that implies very much also the humanitarian sector. Let me get rid of the laser pointer. Yes. So, of course, the humanitarian sector also emits emissions and therefore needs to contribute. When supply chains are main our main contributor, greenhouse gas emissions. And um, so, freight transport represents about 8% of global greenhouse gas emissions, while the terminals and warehouses represents about one to 2%. We know that mainly from the private sector and that is not much different than the humanitarian sector. As supply chains account for up to 80% of relief expenditures, this is one of the areas uh, we should focus on. So to summarize, the humanitarian sector needs to play its part in the reduction of emissions and the focus should be on supply chains. So after seeing what is at stake and also the role of the humanitarian sector, we want to reason the need for carbon accounting. Economist Peter Trucker once said, you can't manage what you can't measure and what you can't man uh, measure, you can't improve. To put this into context, if you're not aware of what emissions you're emitting, it's very hard to improve and reduce emissions. Therefore, the aim of this initiative is to drive sustainability by measuring the carbon footprint, but not only to measure, but also to use the results. So to identify areas with the highest environmental impact, with so the greatest uh, leverage for improvements, to determine improvement areas, what is quickly feasible, what are the low hanging fruits, and how can we change our business on long-term perspective, to identify best practices and share them with the own organizations and with others. So, um, Carmen will give us now some in insights into the carbon uh, accounting exercise of ICSC. Can you still mute it? Thank you, uh, Jacob. Um, I think you frame very well what the problem is, and I think the responsibility that we all have on this as a humanitarian sector. I would like to start first of showing you a bit of how we did our carbon accounting tool. And then the second part of the presentation will, will be really the project that we want to do on how to adapt one carbon accounting tool. It could be ours, but it can be uh, another carbon accounting tool from another um, 
uh, another organization and something that it can be uh, it can be used by by many other organizations okay so first uh, the methodology that we have used um, <clears throat> what we have done in ICRC we have tried to map all the scopes okay in an account one accounting tool so that means <clears throat> the scope one the scope two and uh, the scope three uh, I will not go into the details what it means, but I'm sure that it resonates to many of you. One of the things that we did not manage to, um, to include into our carbon accounting tool is the waste that we have, as well as the liquid, the leakage from the air conditioning systems. I mean, the waste, I mean, the waste from uh, the distributions that we do and the warehouse that, uh, workshops that we, uh, we run all over the world. And um, this is the view that we don't really have data until now. So it was, it's, it's, it was quite complicated. Anyway, the consultant said that when you look at the whole ICRC carbon accounting tool, that was quite small, uh, but we need to do it in the future. But at least that's why we decided not to do it uh, now and to do it in new uh, versions. The standards, we wanted really to have something that is a standard, a standard and international. So we ask, I mean, we are using the greenhouse uh, protocol Okay, this greenhouse protocol is used over the world, and uh, although it doesn't really cover all our needs at the humanitarian sector, for example, we need to kind of came up with a methodology of how uh, to um, how to measure the mission for the cash-based interventions, which I'm sure that many of the humanitarian sector that they are part of this conversation uh, do uh, nowadays. For the, for example, the cash-based um, interventions, uh, the way we uh, decided with the consultants to calculate is to take the national consumption emissions, which already <clears throat> are normally available. We are not saying it's the right way, but there was a way to do it in that time. Um, the perimeter that uh, we, we have um, used is all our activities. We mean from the local at the delegation or office level to the regional as well as our headquarters. The data we, um, we uh, try to, uh, I mean, uh, ICRC has already a lot of softwares which are centralizing all the data and to reduce the burden at the field level where our, our, our colleagues are in the operations, we really try to focus on the centralized data. This, I have to say that even if it's already centralized and it has already kind of, you should have a good quality of data. It was one of the main challenges because um, we have realized that the data, it was not 100% clean and we need to do a quite cleaning of that data. We, we hope that with the future, uh, we will not to do that, but it's just something that I think is a challenge for the people, I mean, for the organizations that they are trying to do something similar. Data is something quite important. So if you're Jacob, you can go to the next one. Then I would like to talk about the emissions factors. Um, the emissions factor, what it means is, you know, how we convert whatever we have or we use into CO2 emissions that go to the atmosphere. So, for example, how much is one liter of, uh, of oil in our car that contaminates or pollutes on CO2? On, on CO2. So, at the end, it's, it's, it's quite simple. You get an emission factor per, per item um, and then uh, you have it. The complication comes that in, a, in, a, in the humanitarian sector, we work in countries where those emissions factors are not so clear. And, and uh, because, uh, of course, they depend, they are quite local, okay? And uh, we have to, uh, to, you know, come of um, trying to do a, a bit of an invention of how to make it uh, as much as we could and, and try to create some... Um, uh, some ratios, okay? I will go a bit more in detail. So for example, if I go to uh, the parties, um, as you can imagine, as a humanitarian organization, you buy huge amount of items and you cannot really track all single item that you have. So we, for example, for food, we uh, we have 35 emission factors. And with this 35 emissions factor, we cover 80% of uh, of uh, the food that we uh, that we buy. Then we have, for example, and this is a good, uh, a good um, something good to show. Then we have construction, which is a bit less good to say. And uh, with 30 emissions factor, we can all only cover uh, 50%. Although we did some ratios, I just want to uh, to uh, explain this because even if we manage to get 630 emissions ratios, we we could not do 100% of what we have. But this, it was already a good start, okay? So for example, you have for, uh, for medical, 
uh, the medical we did it for the finance, so, so for the cost, we could not go to all the items that uh, that we buy. Okay, one of the things that now we need it needs to happen is that these emissions factors needs to be maintained regularly. Okay, and this is something that is uh, quite a lot. Uh, huge work and then it needs to be improved then we should get more emissions factors in the future so if you can go to the next one please so then i just want to uh, give a, a bit of a, a global result of this uh, carbon accounting tool from my crc for uh, 2019 as you can see um, our main carbon accounting tool it comes from food and relief items of course that's where our biggest budget uh, is which it makes sense but this also because of the production so transport it has of course a huge impact but the production, it could even have it more. So we need to be very careful and conscious on, on those emission factors. Um, here you can see some of the projects that our ARC are running. I have to say these projects are not really so much into, uh, into emissions, or into uh, emissions, but it's much more into sustainability, okay, for uh, the three pillars of sustainability in environmental, uh, social, and economic impact. So if you can go to next, please. This is a bit of our next step of, uh, when we talk about our uh, carbon accounting tool. So we have realized when we have run twice the, the, the tool that we really need to improve uh, some of the data that we have. I mean, some things started last year, but of course it takes time to change the, the software that we use. Like it's a commercial uh, ferry, the employee commute, the traveling and electricity consumption. I already mentioned about the cash-based uh, intervention, which it needs to be uh, look at it as, and I think it's not just the ICRC, but as humanitarian sector, okay? And one of the things that now is the right time to do is not just to do the mission, I mean, to do, uh, to have the baseline of uh, what our missions are, but really to move a step forward and really start doing and setting goals to reduce these emissions. So if you can go to the next one, Jacob. Yes, uh, thank you, Carmen, for those interesting insights into ICS ICSC's carbon accounting. Um, experience and um, now we're coming back to a little bit of theory. So we already heard that carbon accounting is not a standardized procedure and actually there are quite uh, a lot of different estimation approaches out there. So you can either calculate your emissions based on energy consumption or activity data and then if we're looking at activity-based calculations this can be done on the basis of distance traveled, ton kilometers, transport or travel costs. And a uh, third layer, there are also very different emission factors um, specified on countries, industry, or then company specific. And um, the results depend heavily on the chosen calculation approach and the emission factors, so they can really vary. And of course, after calculating emissions and identifying internally the improvement areas of organizations, um, they also want to compare the results with others. I mean, they want to know where are they standing, what are others doing, how they could improve. And um, ICSC made this experience and, and also we at Help Logistics made this experience when we supported MSF with carbon accounting, that due to the different approaches and various um, emission factors, benchmarking is not really possible. And this lack of comparison possibility really prevents the identification of best practices and learning from other organizations. Also reporting of any progress as no classification for good or bad progress is, uh, is there is really complicated. And also the raising of funds to reduce the environmental impact is hindered. We are well aware that many initiatives have started in the recent years regarding that topic, but more coordination, standardization and joint efforts are needed. And one initiative combine, combining those aspects, um, we want to present to you today. Thank you, Jacob. And uh, exactly, that's a bit what we are trying to avoid here, that we are all different organizations running their own carbon accounting tool with different data, different methodology, different scope. And at the end, we cannot compare and we cannot actually measure because it's different. So it's, it's complicated. So that's why we came with this idea of adapting a carbon accounting tool. So what um, our project, will be uh, in two different phases. Okay, the first phase, uh, we would like to get um, to sensit sensitize a large set of organizations. We already run a survey and we have already 40 organizations who are interested in participating. Okay, so then those 40 um, organizations will start with this sensitization. Then we will do a consultation 
with uh, to explore data availability, data collections, to go a bit more into the, the, um, into the what it will be important to take into account when we develop a carbon accounting tool. Then something that we would like also to do is, I mean, we already have an understanding of, of the main uh, carbon accounting tools that have been uh, developed in the humanitarian sector. And what we would like to do is really to share the experience between all of us. We have done already ICRC, for example, with ACTED, but I think, and with MSF, but I think it will be very important to do it all together to really understand uh, what, what it works, what doesn't work, what are the lessons learned, and, and see how we can improve in the future. Of course, uh, it could improve our own carbon accounting tools when it, when it needs to be updated, but for this project, it will give the basis for the tool that we want to build. Okay, so then going through these first steps, then we will be able to define the specifications. And then as a humanitarian sector, one of the things that we would like to do, and I think is quite ambitious, but it needs to be a, at least try, okay, is to, to, um, to define the specifications on the methodology that we would like to use as humanitarian sector, the scope, the missions factors that we want to do. So in order to create synergies, to, de I mean, to develop synergies and ensure consistency and also reduce costs because at the end, we are all paying different consultants. So if we can really start working together, it will really help us all. Okay, then of course, this tool, we want to have them for the long term. So they, then we will, uh, and as you just said, we are working with you to help us with the sensitization and as well with the training, because of course, you know, a tool is nothing, if there is no training next to it, who can actually uh, guide the people to use the tool. And as well, um, we are looking with other organizations who could help us with the maintenance and the technical support to, to uh, run this tool in the long term. And then, of course, the second phase, I mean, the, fir the first phase, the timeline is between mid-May, so we will start in a couple of uh, weeks until uh, November. Uh, you may say it's, it's, it's quite long, but as you can imagine, we really want the, the different organizations to participate, but also to go back to their, to their headquarters and discuss with them if, if they agree, if they don't agree, so to try to get the consensus that we are looking for. Okay, and then the second phase, which will be actually the development of the tool to adapt this, uh, this, uh, the, the tool that already exists. It, as I said, it can be ICRC or it can be many others like Save the Children or MSF, that's something that will be discussed in the first phase. And um, of course, to taste and to, uh, to uh, make it available for everyone. And this will happen at the first semester on, on 2022. So if you can go to this next slide, thank you. So I mentioned a bit, the, the I mean, what we did when we start having the, you know, when we understood the need of having a project like this is to send a, a survey to, uh, to really understand the feasibility of this project. And I would like to give you a, a bit of snapshots of some of the questions. So the first one, it was if the people who was uh, part of those um, uh, answering were, uh, were interested in the project. And you can see, uh, you know, it's only one person who said no, it was not interested. Then of course we asked who would like to be volunteers because we will have organizations that they will be uh, there, they can participate in the sensitization. We will also send survey to get their feedback, but then we will have to have a small group that we will work one-on-one -on -one with them. Okay, and then um, you can also see the results, 45% or 42%, they say yes. It was only uh, five, 10% who say no, but actually, then we have the majority of them, there was around 50 who says maybe. And when you look at, because they had to specify, when you look at, at why they say maybe, it was really because they needed to understand the workload that this will bring, okay? And which is completely understood because of course we did not go into that detail. Then we actually also wanted to map who has already a, a tool. I mean, this tool, uh, we asked if how many, I mean, which was the scope, it was big, small, and then we have all kind of, and then uh, we can say that 50% they have a carbon accounting tool, okay? Then, um, also, we wanted to understand um, who was having these similar discussions because during uh, the different discussions that we have had, we have realized that 
you know, of course, this is this is being discussed in many different places. You have the Danish discussing this uh, for the Danish NGOs. You have the French with Action Against Hunger, um, who is leading, who is also discussing the same board conversation in uh, for the French NGOs. And we really wanted to make sure that we we get those um, those people and that we can actually make sure that this conversation goes a step a farther, and then we are all together to discuss. So, uh, Jacob. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and as Carmen said, we, we don't want to develop a tool that isn't used in the end and is just stored somewhere in the web base. And therefore, how she already pointed out, um, we not only want to align carbon accounting and provide a calculator for the sector, but we really want to help organizations to understand sustainability and how to implement changes in their operations to reduce the environmental impact without harming their life saving operations. So, we want to develop a sustainable logistics training that will introduce sustainability and the concept of emission measuring so that various approaches exist, why we choose actually those specific approaches in the tool, and that might be uh, also changes in the future required because, of course, um, emission factors change over the time. And um, also we want to provide guidance on how to work with the tool, especially how to use the results to improve the operations and drive sustainability. So not only the calculation, but what to do then with the results. And lastly, we want to highlight uh, some sustainable, uh, sustainable initiatives from the humanitarian and commercial sector to share and learn from experience. Before we will come now um, to answer your questions from the auditorium, we would like actually like you uh, to answer a few questions. So, Please take out your smartphones, uh, split your screen, and open a new tab on your computer. That would be great. And then open um, www.menti.com and enter the code 63065429 because we would like to get an idea of the situation of carbon accounting within the organizations of the auditorium. Of course, those answers will be anonymous, so no worries, no worries about that. Uh, you still will be able to, able to see the code. Let me just switch to the question. Perfect, They're already coming in. So the first question was, has your organization developed the carbon accounting tool? So we see um, actually a few have, majority still says no. If we would combine uh, work in brokers and yes, that would, be equal now, like majority actually is no. So that shows that there is definitely a need for um, a carbon accounting tool in the sector. Uh, okay, let's go to the second question. Is the organization having similar discussions with other organizations? Great, already 20 questions, answers in. So we're seeing that there are discussions ongoing as we already experienced, but still, I guess, a lot of people which could be involved. Great, and uh, the third question, um, are you actually interested in uh, joining this project which we just um, highlighted here? That is a very nice response so far. <laughs> Looks <Great>. good. <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, good, great to hear that. So let's come to the last question. How do you feel about this um, initiative? Um, just enter like one word, two words, which, which come to your mind and um, let's see what, what is on your mind. Challenging. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, that it is, but also really like the, the, the quote um, about time. I think, uh, you know, all the answer are really uh, exactly what we are also thinking, challenging about the time essential. There is, there is a need that we really need to discuss together as a humanitarian sector and try to, to define what we want to have in this uh, carbon accounting tool for us, but also for the future. And, and to really make sure that, uh, that we all try to, to measure in the same way. So we are able really to create those synergies that they are so, in, so important between ourselves. Great. Um, yep, that was from, from our side so far. If you would like to be involved in the project and be part of the group of organizations that will work with the consultants to adapt the tool, please reach out to Carmen or me. We're really happy about any, any support, any organizations um, 
which are interested. And also, thank you so much for your attention. And um, we're also happy Jacob, to- Jacob, there is a question. Answer any questions okay. right now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, Carmen. And so if you have questions, please put them in the chat. I see there already is the first question. I'm really sorry. You said thank you, and I said I thought that uh, you were missing. There is one question from Jan uh, Charlet, who uh, actually is asking: Do the categories defined as program correspond with Scope Three? Okay, can you go to uh, slide seven so maybe yes. people will understand? Okay, and um, and did I see correctly that program represents 75, 80 percent of the total emissions? So. <clears throat> So yes, I mean, I was not the one who uh, has developed uh, developed the, the carbon accounting tool, okay? But what I understood is actually that the scope three, of course, is is uh, is the distribution items that we, we have here. And is these humanitarian programs that you can see in blue, which is a bit less than 75%. I, I have to also um, to explain that one of the things that we need to improve is that there is a small part of transport, but really small, that it appears as a food and relief that it should appear in transport. Because when we buy the food, um, the supplier delivered to our one warehouse, and then we count transport from that warehouse onward. So there is already transport, but it should not change that much. So we can actually say the 70% hourly in our carbon accounting tool, it uh, belongs to, uh, yeah, to, to programs, or I mean 70% of the, of the missions. So the answer is uh, yes, Jan. The second question, how does this fit with the work of the Climate Action Accelerator? Okay, um, I, I'm, my colleague who is actually the one working, uh, who they developed this carbon accounting tool, uh, is having uh, discussions with Clam uh, Climate Action Accelerator. I don't think there is nothing on writing, but uh, the, the, one of the discussion, it could be that maybe they could help us with the maintenance of this, um, of this, uh, of this uh, new tool. And then also maybe help us on targeting what will be uh, the set goals and, and you know, the future of what we need to do. So that will be uh, the answer. Can the private sector participate? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, we did not really think about it, but I will. But I think it, it could be a really good um, point coming, um, you know, some from 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 the private sector. Actually, the humanitarian, I mean, the consultant that uh, we want to take uh, has been <clears throat> is the one who has developed our carbon accounting tool, but actually has developed other carbon accounting tools in the humanitarian sector, for example, in ACTED, but also in the commercial um, private sector. So, so I think in that sense, the, the, um, the consultant will bring this uh, private sector, but I think I say it could actually be a good idea. So please, if you have some uh, someone from the humanitarians, I mean, the private sector, who would really like uh, to be part of a bit of this uh, initiative, please, you know, just write me an email in this uh, in this email, and I will be super happy uh, to um, to discuss. How can this be integrated into the community resi resilience perspective in less development countries? Wow, this is um, is a, a more difficult question to answer. Okay, um, I know um, the programs are working on that, and how uh, our programs are more into looking how people can be more resilient, but actually how our programs can have less damage, environmental damage than the, the ones that we have now. And for that, they are trying to see what, uh, you know, how integrate this perspective when we define the programs. But I cannot really go into all the details. I work in logistics, so I'm, uh, you know, I don't work so so much close to the communities. So, but please, if you would like to get a bit more okay. uh, detail on that. You can actually uh, uh, write me an email and I will try to uh, get my my colleagues to answer that. I don't know, Jacob, if you will have, if you could answer the question about resilience. No, I think uh, you pointed that out quite good. Okay, I think there are no other questions. We still have two minutes, so if there's like one question left, um, please don't hesitate to put it in the chat. And otherwise, we're looking forward to you reaching out to us to be included into the project. And um, yeah, definitely 
Thanks for attending this meeting. Thanks for your attention, giving us a chance to share our initiative here. And yes, we will pre we will share the presentation um, here in the chat. No worries. And actually, Alberto, I think also the whole session is recorded, and you can watch it again. But we will happy to, happy to share the presentation. Okay. Thank you very much to all the participants. Thank you very much, Jacob, for um, for presenting and, and leading the presentation. Thank you. Thanks,